Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff Phone Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. So today we have another episode, uh, international episode, looking at um, women around the world. And so I guess my question for you, since I've already asked if you like to travel, and you said yes, where's somewhere you've always wanted to go? That is a great question. I don't actually know. I just want to go everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. Maybe Iceland? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to go to there. Very white places, I guess. I don't know why. (laughs) Um, They're also cold places. Don't you, like, hate cold? I do hate the cold. This is a dumb idea. I mean, it's not always cold. No, it's a great idea. They're both great. Uh, I think part Uh, of that is as long as I'm prepared for it, then I'm good with it. If I'm not prepared, then I will be miserable. But if I'm prepared for it and I've got the right clothing mm -hmm. and we get snow... I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Where was the last place you went internationally? Uh, Does Canada count? Yeah. Okay. Canada's mine too. I went there not too long ago to visit my friend in Canada. Oh, that's that's fun. Um, Yeah, Canada's Canada's lovely as well. Also cold. This is very funny to me. Uh, Uh, (laughs) It wasn't cold when I went. Yeah, it's not cold all the time. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah, Canada was the last place I went as well. I went for a puppet festival after That's we right. did our, our puppetry episode, Women in Puppetry. Still very I jealous went. of that. that. It was very, very fun. I Like I said in a previous episode, though, I really thought I was going to get stuck in Canada. I wouldn't have been mad about it, but I, I was in the hotel staring out the window like, I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> Do you wish you were still there now? A part of me very much does. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, as we sit here and I'm like, man, maybe I should be in it. I've tried to escape many places, started fantasizing about one day traveling on a plane. (laughs) Yeah. It seems so distant now. It's pretty sad when air travel becomes something you long for because it's (laughs) not Oh, I hate it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's not. I, I, I think it's really funny the first like two times I did it, I loved it. And then after that, you're kind of like, I just want to get there. (laughs) Yes, yeah. I think uh, the more we started traveling for work, the less I liked it. Mm Because I'm like, oh, yeah, I get motion sickness a lot. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's no fun. (laughs) Um, Well, uh, one day, Samantha, one day. We'll be able to travel again. We will. Um, so today we're we're looking at Chile. Um, around the end of October 2020, over 78% of citizens voted in support of rewriting the country's constitution to replace the guiding principles imposed by General Augusto Pinochet's military dictatorship 40 years ago. Not only that, but Chileans also voted that a popularly elected body of people be solely responsible for the new constitution. 155 members split evenly between men and women with spaces reserved for indigenous people to be elected in April. Um, Women leaders insisted, never again without women. When some men in government looked like they'd argue, women started chanting, we are half, we want half. The Constitution is scheduled to reach voters by mid-2022. Huge celebrations swept across the country when the news broke. Yeah, man, this is a huge accomplishment. I think someone tweeted not too long ago about how they can't believe Chile actually was able to do that and the U.S. won't even budge in interpreting it in a moderate yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and almost never are constitutions rewritten without transitioning to a democracy, a collapse of government at the end of wars. Um, this shows a democracy with unhappy constituents can call for a change in their constitution. And I, I am very impressed and somewhat jealous. Yeah. Uh, having citizens making up all the deciding members of a constitutional convention is also extremely extremely rare and very forward-thinking. I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, And all of this was in response to street protests that took place in 2019 against inequality and high expenses that drew millions of marchers. And oh my gosh, just looking at those pictures is so inspiring as well as you see what can happen when, Mm -hmm. again, women lead and take charge and refuse to be ignored. It Mm -hmm. is a beautiful gathering. And I do... I, I. 
as I'm reading some of the columns about the fact that they continue to do this in 2020 and they refuse to be not heard. They continue to chant when they think they're about to be pushed down. Inspirational uh, beyond mm-hmm. anything else. Um Confrontations, of course, between police and protesters left 30 protesters dead and thousands injured, which is not shocking, but always upsetting. Um, Mm -hmm. And some who are arrested reported extreme brutality and sexual violence, which is part of the reason they had these marches as they try to claim their freedom and their bodies, as well as uh, protesting against uh, violence against women. Yeah, yeah. And um, depending on the source, you, you get this this information from those numbers can vary and of course like there's that sort of trying to distance uh from well was this directly attributed to the protest this death so there is some variance there um and yeah other than addressing economic inequality protesters also called for an end to gender violence among other things to make society more equitable um and I, I was struck by, like, as we talked about in our Poland episode about the abortion law potentially there, and and this, like, all these things are happening at the same time. Um, and they, all these movements led by women are primarily organized by women, and it is really inspirational. It does show what you can accomplish if, okay. you've, if you work for it and organize. Um, Keep going. Inspirational. Yeah. It is. I love um, looking around the world and I hate that this is where we've come to because we have gone for so long without equal rights, uh, without being heard, with being oppressed. And I say we as a, a gender, but essentially for all marginalized people to mm-hmm. have to get to this point in order to be heard. But it is phenomenal to see how amazing people around the world have come together to protest for their right and doing it in a way that's changing things. Yeah. That is inspirational. Um, Whether we're talking about Nigeria or we're talking about Poland or we're talking about Chile, just the fact that these women have come together and marginalized individuals have come together to be heard is awe-inspiring and like chilling. Like I get chills Mm -hmm. thinking about it and wondering like how are we going to look back on this and how are we going to celebrate the things that people have fought for. And we we talk about historical context about, you know, the civil rights protests and Mm -hmm. the suffragette protests and all of that. But knowing that things are transitioning and we, people are making history in our time. Yeah. is phenomenal to see. Yeah. And I just... When I was reading about this, I was struck by, wow, half women. We are half, we want half. Right. And it's, it's sad that that was so shocking to me. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so, we're definitely going to keep an eye on that. Um, and if any listeners are in Chile and would like to share your stories of what's going on there, we would love to hear them. We would love to hear from any of you listeners. Uh, you can email us at stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can also find us on Instagram at Stuff I Never Told You or on Twitter at Momstuff Podcast. Thanks as always to our super producer, Andrew Howard. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 